I've always felt like an outsider and I'm drawn to outsiders or people who find different paths, people who break the rules. Turner was an outsider, a maverick. He turned the art world upside down. He liberated it even. They're calling this show Late Turner, painting set free. This is me, Benjamin Zephaniah, and this is my private view of Turner. I'd heard the name Turner when I was a kid, but I thought he was one of those kind of dead white British artists that really don't say anything to me. And then I remember when I was a young Rastafarian, I was really angry with the world. And this friend said, you've got to check out this painting by Turner. It's a slave ship off the coast of Jamaica, probably not far from where my family come from. The captain has worked out that it's more financially rewarding if he throws the live slaves into the sea rather than landing with them. But it's not in this exhibition. It's not here. Fortunately, it's in the catalogue. So I can look at it now. But you can see the bodies of these Africans. And they are drowning in their chains. But actually, what really strikes me is the amount of blood. It seems that there's blood in the sky. I mean, it's, it's kind of almost impossible for us to imagine. Turner wrote a poem, but there's a little bit here which I'll read from it. Aloft all hands, strike the top mast and belay. Yon angry setting sun and fierce edged clouds declare the typhoon's coming. Before it sweeps your decks, Throw overboard the dead and dying, near heed their chains. Hope, hope, fallacious hope, where is thy market now? It's probably the one that's most connected to me personally. So, thank you, Mr. Turner. So here we have it. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. When I see paintings like this, I think, what would Turner be doing now? If you think about the riots that happened in our streets not so long ago, he probably would have come out, he probably would have borne witness to it and, 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 and painted it, sat there with his brush and painted it. He was a chronicler, if you like. He liked to bear witness. This is a terrible, dreadful moment. But you also have a lot of detail. One wonders these people uh, who were watching from the sidelines. Some of them are looking towards the fire, but there's a couple here that are looking towards us as if saying, come and have a look. But this is, uh, to me, this is uh, a little bit revolutionary. You know, to see the Houses of Parliament burning down and then you come and paint it. I mean, Babylon is burning, Babylon is burning with anxiety. Burn Babylon, burn. It's like the system is being burnt. But what do we replace it with? Another system. I'm seasick. Wow, this is, this is all over the place. It's obviously a, a ship in, in a storm, but I just can't tell which way the wind's blowing. It's just all over the place. It's, uh, it's kind of crazy, but it's very, very beautifully crazy. I kind of think that it just carries on. If you take the frame away, it will just carry on all over the place. From what I understand at this time, 
paintings were precise. You knew what they were. They were the kind of standard. Turner kind of froze his all upside down. He's looked at all his contemporaries, all the artists who were around at the time, and says, I'm not going to do what you do. I want to do what I do. I want to do what's in my head. And um, never mind a rule book. You come along, then you move forward, and you be true to yourself. This is true. I have family in Jamaica who, who work on the sea and they've told me they've been in storms sometimes. They say they don't know what hit them. They, they, they looked up and there wasn't sky because they were upside down and all that kind of stuff. So it's a world that I don't know. It's a world that I fear. And maybe that's because I can't swim. Turner tells a story that he was actually tied to this mast as the storm was raging about him. Now, most people don't believe that. Apparently, people have checked his diary and checked his appointments, and he's probably having a meeting with his agent or something. He wasn't there. But that's not the point, actually. I guess, like a poet or a writer, your job is to use your imagination, to take your imagination there. <sighs> Turner might not be there, but his imagination is right up there. Ah, Regulus. Now this is interesting because uh, this is one of those paintings I've, I've seen in books, I saw it in the catalogue, but to be standing in front of it, it really is bright. He really is trying to tell us something about the power of the sun. And look at it. Lights up the river out. Apparently there's some story. Regulus was a Roman consul that was captured by the Carthaginians. They took off his eyelids so that the sun burnt his eyes and blinded him. We, the people looking at the painting, stand in place of Regulus. We are blinded by the light. pop song, doesn't it? And maybe, maybe Turner's actually regulus. Because Turner started to have eye problems. In fact, he started to have cataracts. And he loved the sun. And it's like some people who are kind of creative get a drug. Sometimes it's an artificial drug. You know, I can't work without doing martial arts or Tai Chi or some deep breathing, some deep meditation. I'm kind of addicted to breathing. Well, Turner probably was addicted to the sun. He kept staring into the sun. So maybe this is Turner kind of thinking about himself and thinking about his relationship with the sun and what it's doing to him. Then looking back at this story and thinking, my eyes are being burned. I too am blinded by the light. There's this great story about a woman who's sitting on a train and the man in front of her, this well-behaved, well-dressed gentleman, um, for some reason jumps up, puts his head out of the train as, as it's going at speed for almost 10 minutes and then he sits down, closes his eyes for 15 minutes and just sits back and she thinks, let me have a go at it. So he puts her head out the window, kind of uh, gets a bit blown away and a bit wet, sits down and falls asleep. A couple of months later, she's at an exhibition at the Royal Academy of Arts, and she sees this painting, and then she realizes that the person, that man who sat in front of her, was Turner. I wonder if what the dancing maiden signifies, the past with the boat as well, that's like somebody doing analog, and this is digital, you know what I mean? That's the, that's the past, this is, this is the future. And um, the way he's painted it, you, you can feel the movement, it's speed, it's speed captured somehow. It's as if the train is just going to go whoosh, but this is just the moment before it goes. And look at this, it's a little hair 
or is it a rabbit? I can never really tell the difference. But um, it's racing down the track as they do sometimes. But it could be symbolic, you know, a race between like nature and modernity. Who is going to win? Well, this little hare, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, make sure you get off the track because that train will run you over. A disaster at sea. Well, this is Turner being very political. That's what I would call it. Others would call it social commentary. I guess it's both. This is based on a story or the true happening of a British ship that was taking women convicts to Australia. And the ship got in trouble just off the French coast. And the French offered help, but the captain refused the help and so allowed them to die. You can see the women clinging to each other, clinging onto their babies. The ship in the background going down. This is about saying to that captain and the powers that be that this should not happen. I could imagine at the time when he painted this, he was really angry. There's a kind of violence in the way that it's painted. I suspect that he probably was lashing with his brush a bit. I don't feel you could paint this painting sitting down and doing it gently. This has to come from emotion. This has to come from somewhere deep. This painting was never exhibited in his lifetime. But it's exhibited now, and for those who care about these things, who want to look back, here you have a great travesty recorded. Forever, hopefully. Sun setting over a lake. Now, who would have guessed it? I mean, just look at this painting. There's nothing here that's really solid. Here, the sun is the subject. And although the sun is a subject, look at the sun. It's just a little blob down there on the left-hand side of the painting. It is a rather weird sun, though, I must say. You see, I would get the brush and make the sun perfectly round, because I know that the sun is perfectly round. But Turner's not like that. It seems to me that one of the things he did very beautifully was break the rules, was kind of make his own path in the art world. He was kind of uh, the anti-artist artist, if you like. So when some of the critics saw this painting, they said he was going mad, he was senile, he was losing it. He was off his rocker. It was just not worthy of review or whatever. But there's others who thought that um, he's been very futuristic. It was abstract before abstract. He was like the first impressionist before impressionism. I just can't get over that son. It's so cute. I never thought I'd say that the son is cute. It's a lots of things, but I didn't think I'd ever say it's cute. But there you go. I've been sitting here looking at this painting for a long time. You see, it's called The Parting of Hero and Leander. Is this them having a parting kiss and all these kind of angels watching them or whatever? But to be honest, that stuff doesn't really interest me when it comes to this painting. It's just a beautiful painting. In a way, it could be Turner just showing off. But poets do that. Not all poems are about things. Not all poems are about happenings. Not all poems are about emotions and stuff like that. Sometimes the poet just does wordplay for the sake of it. And here, Turner might be just painting a beautiful painting which is loosely based on a story 
but is not necessarily trying to tell us anything. It doesn't really tell me anything, but it tells me that the guy is a damn good painter. He has the sun and the moon in the same sky. It's like what happens in Lincolnshire every now and again. It's just a beautiful painting. Art for art's sake, if you like. It's beautiful. So back off, Benjamin. Sit down. And enjoy it. So look at this work of art. It's called Peace Burial at Sea. Turner painted this because one of his friends died at sea and was buried at sea. Quite a mournful picture, really. Although we have fire again and we have more light, but the ship itself is the colour of mourning black. In fact, somebody complained when he painted this, and they, they said that the sails of the ship were too dark, too black. And Turner said he wished he could have made them blacker. One of the things I notice is you know, here we have this burial, but there's this bird just flying low above the water. One has to wonder whether Turner is also thinking about his mortality. And there's going to be a day when the painting stops. But even after the painting stops, the birds keep flying around and the sun rises once more. But don't get too depressed, you know. Better must come. Sunrise. The thing about this painting is that it's a great time of the day to go out there and breathe deeply. I play Tai Chi, and if you know anything about Tai Chi, we believe that in the night all the chi settles in the trees and in the atmosphere. So if we go out at sunrise, we can breathe in the chi and kind of use it for our energy. So we breathe in and breathe out. We breathe in. and we get the energy from the atmosphere. And that's what I feel when I look at this. I feel like I want to play Tai Chi, I want to breathe, I want to live. This was later on in his life. It was actually not long before he died. So he probably didn't have to prove anymore that he could paint castles. So he just kind of leaves the castle floating in the air. What stands out is the sun. The sun shining through at the center of the painting. There's this story. It's December. It's dreary. Outside, it's cloudy. Turner is lying in bed, very, very ill. Suddenly, the sun shines through. It shines onto his face and it lights him up as if to just kind of illuminate him and, and breathe life into him. But one hour later, he passed away. It's a bit like before somebody dies and they have a, a burst of life, where well, he has a burst of light. Yeah. Breathe. It's morning. Now look at this. This is a weird, very, very weirdy Victorian thing that they used to do. I've seen a couple of these, this mask. Just after the person's died, somebody comes along and makes a mask of them. Well, I've come to the end of my journey around this exhibition. And um, I'm not sure how I feel coming face to face, as it was, with the creator of these great works of art.
Brother, I know you're not really here, old man. I know you're somewhere else, but I'd just like to say thanks for the paintings and thanks for that stuff you did against slavery. You've got a good heart, my brother. Wherever you are, man, just keep it real. You get me? Safe.